Yo, Instagram, we live again. We are talking, what the heck does creativity even mean, dude? And where does it come from? Where does creativity come from and what does it mean? That's what we're going to talk about today, 100%. In fact, I'm having my boy Jason Deppin come over. Hey, Happy, what's up? We are about to start talking about creativity um, and where the heck it comes from. I got my boy Jason in the building. He just uh, requested to hop in live. It's good to see y'all, y'all. We're about to get this creativity conversation flowing because it, it's important for us to know where the heck this thing, where the heck this thing comes from and what the heck it is. What's up, Jason? How are you, man? Hey, Danny. I'm great. How are you doing? Bro, I'm living life. I'm in the car, which means kids, I can't hear them. I can't hear them. So I'm doing good, man. How are you? Or did we start I this, there? Uh, I got this kale smoothie I'm drinking right now. So you're not doing good. I don't mind it, but <laughs> it's, it's, I, it is like kind of like a, what would a grass smell? Or what would a cow smell if it's eating grass? And then this is it. Uh, that's what it smells like right there. That green, that green yummy yum yum you got there. <laughs> I'm actually matching you under the, the hoodie, man. I got the the kale smoothie green on right here. I thought you were talking about my shirt. So just shout out to my company. It's GameStop. Check uh -huh. it out. Where How's GameStop go? doing, bro? It's hanging in there. It's about to, uh, in my mind, it's about the moon any day now. So we'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Bro. That's not why we're here. That's not why we're here. We're here, we here to talk about a little creativity. I mean, we will get to some other stuff. But, I, man... Like I just I want to know like right off the bat what you thought, man. Where do you think creativity comes from, man? I think we're naturally creative, right? Let's say you sit down to do a meditation, and okay, I'm not gonna think about anything. Let me count to ten, and it never works, right? Because but things start bubbling up, right? So I think that's just naturally how we're wired, and something is interesting to us and we our attention goes in that direction and just ideas start flowing what do you say is that is that where is that where it started off for you is that where you that's where you're at now because like if it, it sounds like you telling us how the end game right now right like that's that's where we're going yeah well <laughs> it's interesting because i think that's the only thing that's happening right okay. so where is our attention Maybe, maybe our attention is on the fact that I'll never be good enough, right? When we're creating from that, uh, from that attention, right? So if we're pointed in that direction, things, things come to us. Thoughts, if I, if I start holding this highlighter, I start thinking about, uh, you know, I wonder if it's about to go dead or whatever, whatever happens, wherever our attention is, that's where th just things start growing. So what, what I hear you saying is actually creativity, like you, you see it in a different light than what normally we, how we talk about it. Normally we talk about creativity as being something or coming from uh, some fictitious place, but it sounds like you're saying like, and it's just a natural um, process of being a human and being alive. Yeah. I, I think, I don't think we can help creating, you know, now, now if it's like, if, if we're defining creative as bringing something new into the world as a, as a product, then, then that's different. But because there's just steps that, that need to be taken in order to get that process accomplished. But as far as creating, I mean, it's just all day, every day, all we're doing. And, that, and that's the way it looks in my mind. What so about you? I see that. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get there. We get there. We get there. Uh, but like, I'm just noticing the distinction you're making there, right? Like you're making the distinction between like, okay, like creating and then bringing something, product, service, whatever into the world. Because a lot of times we struggle is like, for me as a creative preneur, I've struggled with, I'm trying to, uh, have people, I'm trying to coach more people. I'm trying to get a bigger clientele. I'm trying to um, get more people to see my artwork, whatever that is. Um, and each and every one of us has that thing. That is substantially different than the art of creating the process of creating whatever that is. And I'm noticing for myself, man, is that when I fall in love with the work, right? Like when I fall in love with doing the process, instead of thinking about that end result, like you're kind of sort of saying, um, 
the weight about, oh, I got to create, it has to look a certain way, kind of falls away. And it allows me to, like, jump in with a different creative flow, a different creative spirit. So, like, for instance, we're alive with you right now, man. Like, I wasn't doing this a week ago. I wasn't doing this two weeks ago. But we will be doing this for the foreseeable future. And that's a type of creativity. Right. And that's what yeah. I'm seeing, man. And what's interesting is this this live right here was created out of essentially nothing. It was created out of uh, our attention uh, being pointed in direction, right? And then for wh whatever was going on in here, whatever was being created, it was like, hey, let me reach out to Jason and see if he wants to go live. And, and to me, that that's that's creation. See, we, we put too much weight on it, Jason. That's what I'm hearing you say right now is, is as creators, as entrepreneurs, as just really human beings, we start getting so caught up in what it means to create. But like, it's simpler than that. It's, it's not, it's not this complicated process of I have to hit X, Y, Z before I create this and this, this here that I created is creative. But the whole process, I'm creating myself, I'm creating the space that is around the project in each and every moment. And that's real cool. Like, I knew it was going to be good to talk to you, Jason, because this is something I, I, I have not tangibly put my finger on in a while is, yo, the creative space, the creative spark. It comes from just living life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What you said earlier was, uh, you know, we, we get a little bit uh, sidetracked on what we thought it should look like, right? But we don't realize that was just a creation in itself, too. That's just, an, that's, just, that's just an illusion. That's an imagined picture of what it should be, right? It's like a first draft. But we get so fixated on that because, I go, well, no, I, I got to have it like this. But if we can see that this was just a creation, too, and just see how the process goes, then we can we can let that stay soft and pliable, and it, it can it can transform into something different. So okay, okay, okay. So instead of me being so like, and it may, tell me if I'm wrong here, I'm concerned with being the pot that I am not spending time with the actual clay. Hmm. Tell me more about that metaphor. Okay, okay. Um, you once, one time you and I were talking, man, and you were telling me about uh, a story of you could, you could, there was two different groups and they were building pots, actually. Oh, right. One group was, you could probably tell it better. You know what story I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there was this uh, art class and the teacher split the class into two groups. And she said, you guys make as many pots as you can. Right. You don't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Just crank out as many pots as you can. The other group had the entire class, the entire semester to create the perfect pot. And at the end, it was the the side that just kept pumping them out that ended up with the perfect pot or a more perfect pot than the other half of the class. Yeah, yeah I remember you telling me that, man, and it stuck with me because I had gotten stuck on trying to create the perfect product and then putting the perfect product out versus just repping it out, right? Falling in love with the work, falling in love with the process. And what's cool, like, we, we're using this in terms of creativity. We're using this in terms of how we create more, how we get out of our own head. But this is really life stuff. This is with your kids. This is with your, your coworkers, your boss. It seems to be everywhere, Jason. Like, is there anywhere that you haven't seen that this is the way it kind of sort of works? I think that uh, we can we can kind of forget it, but but I think this is the only way that it works, right? My my thing is we're constantly learning and doing, we're constantly acting and perceiving, and from that we're getting software updates, which is just learning, and as we figure out that this is not a way to make the pot, like the handle keeps falling off, we try different things. And as we try different things, we're learning and then we're trying and we're learning and we're trying. And the next thing you know, we have an amazing cup or pot or 
whatever it is that we're building. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that makes a, that makes sense to me. From the like, I'm just think it, it just, Jason, it resonates with me because that's what I think the number one thing is, is that learning doing right, like. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I try. I learn something in the process. And what we do often is we get upset. Ah, I should have had it on the first try. Um, my kids were, were riding scooters. And I remember the first time they rode scooters, bro, I said, they will not, they not go get riding scooters, bro. They just do not understand. My son is riding the scooter, hitting the curves, hitting the other curve. I'm like, oh, you just got to spend time with it. And it's not a lot of time, right? He spends like 10, 15 minutes a day on it, right? Like not long, but long enough that like I could, like, as long as he wants to get better at it, he's learning. He'll fall. He'll be like, oh, that's, I assume this is what he's doing. That's not what we do. And it keeps going. So when I'm looking at my creative flow, when I'm looking at writing, when I'm looking at, you know, starting a live, when I'm starting, when I'm starting, whatever that is, I'm starting. That seems to be the number one thing, Jason, the number one thing, Yeah. unless you got a, a, a more number one thing. No, I mean, really, it's just seeing how we work. Once we, once you see that, I mean, what else can you do? You, there's nothing else that, that you can do. And, uh, it's interesting because imagine if if you and I, or the average person, tried to ha had to learn how to walk at this age, right? It's like I I'm never going to get it. I just won't. I'll just never be able to figure it out. Whereas the kid is, the kid has a why. The kid has the big why. The kid has a place to go. So it only makes sense to walk, right? The kid gets up. The kid falls. The kid climbs up again and and. You know, it it just happens. The kid doesn't have this whole story about how other kids could f figure it out by now. How how stupid am I? You know, and we're putting when we do that, we're putting our attention in that area. So yes, we're not putting our attention on creating this amazing pot. We're over here. So yeah, the pot's not getting created because nobody's over here focused on it. Dude, I, something in that resonated. Where you're, where, where it's just like, oh, it's even easier than that. You said the kid has somewhere to go, right? Like, so we have the mountaintop to get to. Boom, it's there. And how I, all I think about some days is how uh, Jason is already halfway up the mountain, or uh, this person over there started their, um, their journey and how far along they've gotten. And I'm not even sure, right? Like that this is the mountaintop, right? This is just the mountaintop that I can see. But when I'm at the top of that mountaintop, there's no telling what, what else there will be to see. But there's something about taking that next step in the process. And then actually, like for me, it's like, I'll give you an example, Jason. Um, I just went to this content creation boot camp, and it seems to me like my content has kind of sort of my ability to create content has kind of exploded. Like that ability was there before. I see the link that was made, and it's not it, it's not that the course changed anything within me. What happened was. I got this creative license to be more myself, to try more stuff. Bro, you're not going to be perfect. It's not always going to look great. But unless you put out like a bazillion of these, like you're not going to know what's good and what's not. And that's just, that's a major key, I feel like, bro. I feel like you're just dropping these gems all over today. Like, boop, 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 boop. You know, what's, what's interesting is I just did an Instagram post uh, yesterday. And because you told me a little bit about hashtags, obviously, I pretty much know nothing about it. I mean, you told me, you know, focus on smaller hashtags that, that don't have as much traffic. So that's what I did. I couldn't, I couldn't, I, it was impossible for me to do that before because I didn't learn it yet. Mm. So until you went to this boot camp, yeah, there was things that you could not have done because you just didn't learn them yet. And when I look at, 
my neighbor and he's already a pilot and I want to be a pilot. And, you know, I got 10 years of school left. It's never going to work out. Like, you know, of course this person is where they are. And of course I am where I am because we had totally different experiences. I didn't go to school when he was going to school. So, yeah, I mean, it's very interesting to look at that, the comparison, because yes, it's okay to compare, but, but if you don't see that it's just a process of taking those next steps, then it is like, how come they have this and I don't have this? Well, yeah, you didn't do those things. I mean, that's it. That's all. <laughs> you don't have those things because that's not what you did. They did some things to get there that you didn't do. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, where's my snack? How come I don't have a snack and you do? Like, I went to get a snack. You, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, Yo. One. You just reminded me of this story. Uh, I was, I don't remember how old I was. I'm assuming I was like in middle school, bro. And me and my homeboy that lived next door, we were riding bicycles around the neighborhood and stuff. And there used to be this, like, we thought it was a legendary hill, bro. And we went up it and we went down it, right? And we were like tired, so we were riding back. And there's like a little gas station probably about three or four blocks away from my house. And uh, we stopped at the gas station. I went inside, got some water. I came outside, drinking my water, bro. Like, so good. Oh, boy, it was mad. We go home. Like, right, he ain't really say nothing. So we get home. He pushes down his bike, bro. We ended up in a fight. Because uh, I didn't get him some water. He's like, you supposed to give me some water too, bro. I was like. What you mean? I'm supposed to get you some water. You you the same age as me. Um, I learned a couple of lessons that day. A, always ask somebody if they want some water, regardless. Um, and then B, that those were back in the days when you could fight somebody, and then like in a couple of days you'd be like, "Yo, what's up, man? Yeah, it's all good." <laughs> but yeah, that, your story made me think of that, man. Yeah, so you, it sounds like you were in the meat grinder. And you did learn something, right? So even though it wasn't true that that guy, that you should have got that guy water, you know, that was his creation. And, and to him, that was his fixed reality. So he had to act on that reality. You were in the meat grinder. It sucked. This guy's a jerk. But you still got a software update from it. It's like, you know what? That's kind of makes sense. If I'm going to go get something, maybe I should ask somebody else if they want something. Man, that's the learning doing thing that we're talking about what's so fascinating, so cool about what we're talking about right now, Jason, is when we see it in one area of our life, we'll notice it in other areas as well. And that's a sign of, like, truth. Like, not just, like, my truth, Jason's truth, but, like, truths, right? Like, life truths. And, 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 and like, don't hold, don't hold me accountable to this. Like, look at it for yourself. Like, look at what's true for you. Um, because these are the things that stand in the way of us getting creative. These are the things that stand in the way of us being ourselves. These are the things that stand in the way. But I think Jason has a special uh, opinion on standing in the way of ourselves, probably. Usually. Well, I, well, I would say that that's just an effect, right? It's not, it's not something we need to address. I always get in my own way. You know, you hear people who are like, love yourself, believe in yourself. Like, those are really good ideas. But how do you believe in yourself when you don't believe in yourself? It's like, okay, you know what? I want to believe in Santa again. I just can't make myself do it. I just don't believe in Santa. I mean, how can I make myself? I need to be convinced of that first. So if I don't believe in myself, that's because there's a cause. So I need to figure out what that cause is. Once I figure out the cause, then I see it's not true. Then it goes away. I mean, if, if I think an elephant is running at me, I'm going to hide in the corner and protect myself. But if I can see like it's not an elephant running at me, then I don't need to protect myself. Yeah, man, that's a 100% fact. Yo, look, I don't normally shout out people, but uh, my sister's on. I want to say hello and her husband. What's up? I don't ever, I don't ever do that, but I don't ever see her on. So like uh yeah that's good to see you um but yeah man if there's an elephant in the corner i'm definitely running but if i know that it's really not an elephant but i'm just thinking it's an elephant that's a totally different ball game and that different ball game is the difference between like life and death sometimes 
Yeah, I'm making that super serious. It's not that serious. <laughs> well, not I, that was gonna, serious. I was going to ask you, so like if somebody comes to a coach and I want to create more, right? Like what do they want to talk about? What do they, a, yeah, what, 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 why would somebody come to a coach and say, I want to be more, more creative? Like what do they think the problem is and, and where do you take them? Usually if somebody's wanting to be a little bit more creative, they're usually being stuck in the creative process somewhere. They're struggling with creating. They're, they're usually thinking that they need to be perfect. They need to have a specific type of creation. Boom, right there. And that's not necessarily true. And that that solidity, that looking at that, I need to create it like this, keeps them from creating a laundry list of things that could actually mold, learn, do, learn, do into something probably a little bit better than whatever they assumed that that perfection should be. Yeah. So that that's one side of it. And then the other side of it is, is what I really noticed is, is that people just... People really struggle with like stressing themselves out over it. Like a hundred percent. It's like, I got to get this done. I don't have enough time. And it's like, yo, is that even something you want to do? Like a lot of times we're trying so hard to create something that we don't even want. Like I, I, a while back, I'm try. I was trying real hard to create something. And I'm like, Hey, like, ah. How do I get motivated for this? How do I get inspired for this? And oddly enough, I didn't. I realized that that wasn't what I wanted to do. So like when I put that down, the things that I actually didn't want to do, it gave me this like breath of fresh air to create what I wanted to create. And I'm still on the journey learning, right? I'm still on the journey growing. But that's part of it is helping people to see that this is like a, it's like a marathon, and every once in a while, yeah, maybe you could sprint. But, like, if you start sprinting and you keep sprinting, I've seen people die on the trail, bro. Die on the trail. So, that's it. <laughs> you know, it, what you said reminds me of this quote. I don't remember who said it, and I can't quote it exactly, but it's something like, I'm not, I'm not, it's not that I'm smart. It's that I've stuck with a problem longer. And, and I feel like that that's all that creating is. I mean, yes, you need to have a big why. You need to be motivated to do it or else it's going to be like, I mean, I kind of want to do it, but let's just watch a movie. You know, but if you have that burning desire, like you wake up in the morning, you know, you wake up at 3.30, you have to go to the bathroom. Like you're not going back to sleep. You're just too excited to get going for the day and you want to work on your project. Motivation is, is not a problem because you just have that that big why. Yeah. Man, that's it. Like, I got a couple whys right now. One, like, uh, some people on this channel might know. Uh, it's the people I want to support in my life, right? And because of that, it's like, all right, well, let's get this message out there just so that people have the information, people know about it, let people give people the option. And I'm doing more, right? Like, I'm showing up more because. I have that why, but not only the why, but it's like, I enjoy doing it too. Like there's some things I don't enjoy doing, right? I could be taking a nap right now. I could be in there just sleeping with the twins, but I'm not. I'm out here talking with you about creativity because it's actually what I want to do. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's a pretty simple subject when it gets boiled down. It really is. It seems like such a huge, scary topic, but you break it down, see how it actually works. And it's like, oh, it's just because like, oh, OK, I'm, I'm creating every day. Yeah. Hey, that's that's the whole message. That's 100 percent the message. People don't recognize that they are creating every single day. And because of that, they're stressing the heck out. And that stress is just like, for what? The worry is for what? Get off your own back. Like, for real. It like it allows yourself to like. That's me coming alive to life. I'm in a car, so it's kind of hard to really Crazy party food. out. Yeah, it's really. You have a sunroof, so you can go through that. I guess I could let that up. You know, the other day <laughs> I was in the car. I didn't really have the garage up much, but like that much, I turned it on. I said, yo, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You would be sleeping. 
<laughs> they can find me out here slumped. <laughs> yeah, then she starts yelling at you because you're not working. He said you were going to be working. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you stopping in and telling me telling me what's up about this creativity, where the heck it comes from, and really just boiling it down to creativity is happening just by living life. Like that's that was beautiful, man. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tell you like I tell everybody else. You could leave all your information. This is Instagram, and I'll just put your your little screen name alterability and if y'all guys want some great quality content um check them out for sure anything yeah. else you got going on bro well i just want to say that uh anybody who's watching this if they want to check out creativity just chat with somebody reach out to danny good guy take a chance you know because if you're struggling i mean just talking you, you've been talking with friends and stuff and you know how helpful that is but you talk with somebody who really sees how things work and you can get major insights and Life just becomes so smooth. So I would say take a chance, reach out to Danny and see what happens. Well, I appreciate that, Jason. Yes. As Jason said, thanks. Thanks, Jason. Hey. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks we'll for see y'all later. Yes, see sir. You.